For this video, we're going to look at sketching the space curve determined by this vector valued function and also sketching the position, velocity, and acceleration vectors at a particular value of t. All right, so in thinking about the um, space curve, I'm going to start by rewriting uh, the components of the vector in terms of the parametric equations for the curve. So remember that the vector valued function inputs real numbers and outputs vectors. The space curve is really x, y, z points at the terminal points of those vectors. So the curve and the vector valued function are not the same thing, although they are intimately related to each other. Okay, so I have these uh, three functions here that describe the x, y, z coordinates of the points on my curve. And perhaps at this point you have become to be able to recognize what shape this curve might be. If not, I'm going to go ahead and go through it this time, but hopefully you're getting to the point where you might recognize one like this. We've done quite a few of these. I would notice I have these trig functions here, and so I would choose to eliminate the parameter for my x and my z equations. So if I solve the x equation for cosine 2t, I get x over 2 equals cosine 2t and then solve the z equation for sine 2t. And then I can use Pythagorean identity to relate those two. So cosine squared theta, so x over 2 squared plus sine squared theta, z over 2, the quantity squared equals 1. So that circular cylinder uh, is what the curve lies on. And then we also might notice here in the y direction that y is an increasing function of t uh, that increases at a constant rate. The rate of change of y with respect to t is constant, or dy dt is 1. So that tells us something about how that curve lies on uh, the cylinder. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start to sketch my curve here. Uh, so I've got an x, y, z coordinate system and I need to scale off my coordinate axes. I am just going to draw a rough little sketch here, uh, kind of dashed lines for the cylinder. Just kind of drawing this in very lightly. There is part of the cylinder. Uh, x squared plus z squared equals 4 circular cylinder extending along the y-axis that the curve lies on. Uh, I'm going to notice that y is an increasing function of t, so I know that the orientation of the curve is going to be to the right. Maybe you have gotten good enough at these that you recognize uh, from the get-go that this is going to be a circular helix. Uh, radius 2, uh, and it's going to be extending in the positive y direction, so it's going to be going around the y-axis. Uh, it'll have evenly spaced coils, so it, once I sketch sort of one cycle, I should be able to determine what the rest of the curve looks like. And the other important thing about this, as I am ready to plot this, is that I will notice that the period of the oscillations is pi. The period of those trig functions is pi. So it'll take an interval of t equals 0 to pi to make one cycle around that cylinder. All right, at this point maybe I'm going to go ahead and make a little chart of uh, input output values. So I've got t values here and I'm going to put x, y, z points in my next column here. I would plot, probably plot a point at t equals 0 and then another point at t equals pi, the beginning and end of one cycle, and then halfway between that, and then maybe uh, halfway between those. So maybe every pi over 4. Uh, you shouldn't need to plot too many more points than that, sort of beginning, end of the cycle, halfway, and then maybe halfway again. Uh, sometimes I see students really get bogged down in graphing these by plotting a whole bunch of points. So you really shouldn't need to be able to do that. Uh, the other thing is you should notice that this is going to revolve around this cylinder once in that cycle. So uh, you should know it's going to be halfway around the cylinder uh, at t equals pi over 2, for example. So it shouldn't take you long to figure out these values. All right, so I'm just going to plug these into my x, y, z functions here. Uh, so x is 2 cosine 0, that'll be 2 y will be 0 and z will be 2 times sine of 0, which is 0, uh, at t equals pi over 4. So when I put in t equals pi over 4, notice that 2 is in there, so it's going to double it. So I'll be finding cosine of pi over 2, which is 0. 
Uh, so I'll have 0, y will be pi over 4, and z will be 2 times sine of pi over 2, so 2. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and plot those points. I tend to not, not like to wait too long to plot some points on my curve. Uh, it can get confusing if I plot too many points before I really try to sketch the curve. All right, so I've plotted a point at t equals 0, and then I'm going to plot a point at t equals pi over 4. Uh, I don't need a decimal uh, approximation to 10 decimal places to think about where to put a point at about pi over 4. Just estimate that pi is around 3-ish, so pi over 4 is approximately 3 fourths. So I'm going to plot that point. I'm going to go home outward 0 and then uh, in the y direction about 3 fourths and then up 2. So I'll be on the top of the cylinder. So from t equals 0 to pi over 2, we've rotated around the front side of that cylinder from the front side to the top. So there's my curve uh, with a little orientation arrow. All right, I'm going to go ahead and plot a couple more points here. Uh, and just thinking about the period and the cycle, you should recognize that at t equals pi over 2, it's going to be halfway through its cycle. So the x value should be negative 2. You can verify it is by plugging into the equation there. Uh, y will be pi over 2 and z will be 0. Go ahead and plot that point on the back here. I'm going to draw that part of the curved dash. Sometimes I do that, uh, the part that's kind of going behind. And then let's go ahead and plot a couple more points here. I could plot more points if I wanted a better graph. Uh, we also know that this curve is going to continue. So if I wanted to sketch more, I can just sketch kind of copies of that same helix if I wanted to sketch more cycles of the curve. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and sketch position, velocity, and acceleration vectors uh, at particular value of t. So I'm going to go ahead and find my velocity vector, v of t. That's the derivative of the position vector. you got to be careful about chain rule here. I'm going to use my brackets and commas here. Uh, so in the i component, derivative of cosine is negative sine, and then I'll get an extra 2 for my chain rule. So negative 4 sine of 2t. And then in the j component, the derivative of t is 1. And then in the k component, I will have 4 cosine of 2t. And then the acceleration vector will be the derivative of that. So again, some more chain rules here. In the j component function, the derivative of 1 is going to be 0. Okay, and so uh, often in the homework or on an assignment, you're going to be told to plot those at a particular t value. So I'm just going to tell you a t value here, and we'll go ahead and plot those vectors at that t value. We're just going to do t equals pi over 4, just because that one's a pretty easy one to sketch here, but uh, you might be interested in a particular time, uh, where the object is at at that time, and what are the velocity and acceleration vectors at that particular time. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and evaluate my r of pi over 4. So I'm just plugging pi over 4. I actually already did that uh, when I found this point. Remember that that point is at the terminal point of this vector. So there's my position vector. Uh, so I actually already have a point on the curve at 0 comma pi over 4 2. It's important to understand when I sketch that position vector though that that's a vector with its tail at the origin. So I've sketched that there in green. Uh, all right, and then let's go ahead and do the velocity vector. I'll do that in a different color here. So the velocity vector at t equals pi over 4. So I'm just plugging pi over 4 into my velocity vector that I've calculated uh, previously. All right, so I'll have negative 4 times sine of pi over 2. So that'll be negative 4, 1, and then the k component will be 0. Okay, so when I sketch this vector, it's important to remember that that vector, that velocity vector, is describing what the object is doing when it's at this point on the curve. So when I sketch that velocity vector, I need to sketch that velocity vector with its tail on the curve. So I'm going to start at the point on the curve where the r of pi over 4 ends, and then from there, I'm going to go back 4 units. So I'm using my scale on my x-axis to think about going back 4 units and then to the right one unit in the y direction and up zero units in the z direction. So I drew some little dashed lines there to indicate how I was thinking about plotting that velocity vector. So from that point on the curve, I went back four units, right one unit, 
and then up zero units. So there is my velocity vector at pi over four. Uh, and the green one was my position vector at pi over four. So the acceleration vector, I'm going to do that one in this kind of orange color here at pi over four. So I'm just going to put pi over four into my equation for my acceleration vector. So in the i component, I will get zero and the j component, we will always have, always have zero on that one. And then in the k component, I will get negative eight. All right, so again, when I plot that vector, that's describing the acceleration of the object when it's at that point on the curve at the terminal point of the position vector. So when I plot that acceleration vector, I wanna go from that point and then I'm gonna go down eight units. So I'm just using my scale on my z-axis here to look at eight units. So I've gone down four units from being at z equals positive two to now I'm down here at z equals negative two. And then I need to go another, another four units. So I'm just using my scale there to eyeball it. You can scale off your axis a little bit more if you want to. But that acceleration vector should be pointing straight down at this particular point. And it's important to remember that you're plotting that from that point on that curve because that's describing the motion of the object when it is at that point on the curve. All right, so try some homework where you're going to do some of this. I think there's a question on your checkup assignment that asks you to graph a curve and position velocity and acceleration vectors at a particular point.